Now, everybody is going to dress up their cameras in different ways depending on the jobs that they have. And over the last month or so, I've had the brand new Red Komodo X. And I've actually been trying out some different accessories to find out what works for me, especially for handheld shooting and for a versatile setup. So in today's video, unsurprisingly, we're talking about the Red Komodo X build. This is essentially the base form on how I'm actually going to set up this camera. But let's just get into it. Oh, that also probably means I have to take this apart. Crap. Now, one thing I like about the Komodo X is how small everything actually is. Now, every kiss begins with K and every camera rig build is going to start off with a cage. Now, I am going to be using the Condor Blue Komodo X cage for this rig build. And one thing that I really like is that they updated the bottom plate for the Komodo X, which is a little bit longer than the OG Komodo, but also the side plates as well have Ari Rosette and NATO rail, just in case you have different preferences depending on how you want to put handles and different accessories. Now, a couple of things I'm going to put on this cage to prevent it from being a problem later is going to be the XLR module that you can get for the dsm 3 system. Now, this guy is actually an incredibly handy tool, and honestly, I probably wouldn't have bought the KX if this didn't exist. But what you can do with this guy is connect it to the side of your cage or your rig build or what have you, and you can actually use this for XLR audio. One of the deal breakers for me on the Red Komodo was I couldn't get XLR audio, so if I wanted to use some of my higher quality microphones, I just couldn't do it. So this guy has not only one, but two that you could attach on the side of your rig in order for you to have some pro quality sound. Another thing that I'm gonna put onto here is because I am gonna be opting for some Ari Rosette mount accessory. So I actually got this Ari Rosette adapter also by Condor Blue in order for me to put this on the side of my cage and to make it a little bit easier to get on other accessories. One thing that I do get roasted about quite a bit is going to be my cable management, but not as much anymore, but still sometimes, is actually gonna come from these Mondo ties. Now these are actually going to attach onto your rig and you can actually feed your cables through here to make your cable management a little bit easier. That way, when you need to move things around on your camera, you're not going through wires in order to do it. Now, as somebody that does shoot a lot of handheld, I also probably need a top handle. Now, I am using the Condor Blue top handle, and there's a couple things I like about it. Now, there is a run stop button that's going to be onto here, and you could get an extension cable to actually control the run stop, but also you have a comfortable pad at the bottom for easy handheld shooting, and you also have this little space at the top here, so I can put my index finger into here and lock in my hand so it feels nice and secure. Other top handles I've had have either been too long of a kind of handle part on it and sometimes I feel like I could slip off because they've put a comfortable handle on it it's easy to slip but with this guy if I use my index finger put in the side here it's actually locked on so even if these three fingers slip then I still have my index finger hooked into the handle itself also, it has the mounting points on it for monitoring, which we're going to talk about a bit later. Now, I do like my rigs to be a bit more versatile. I like to get something I could do handheld and I could do sticks if I ever need to, depending on the situation. And having this cage here is great, but also having something like a riser plate rods and a dovetail is going to make things that much better. Now, Condor Blue also makes these as well that I could attach onto my kit. Basically, what I'm going to do is get the riser plate onto my cage and I can remove or put this entire setup on a dovetail while it's on a tripod. So sometimes I want to get an interview shot or sometimes I want to get some handheld shots, it makes it really easy to do by just sliding it off the dovetail entirely. You also have a choice of releasing different parts of the dovetail, which makes things a lot easier and a lot more flexible. Sometimes we need the 15 millimeter rods and sometimes that we don't, but it is nice that you can make that choice whenever the situation calls for it. Now, in terms of getting decent audio, there is a couple of moving parts. Now, I do actually use the rod clamp that's on here to get a 15 millimeter rod on the front of my camera. Now, the reason why I'm gonna do that is that I'm actually using this contraption over here. Now, this is a rod clamp with a cold shoe on it as well, so I can actually put on an XLR mic clamp at the top of this mount. The reason being is because I'm gonna be using my MKE 600 by Sennheiser. Now, this guy is pretty affordable. It's a lot cheaper than my MK416, although it is battery operated, so you have to change batteries from time to time. However, However, this is a great microphone to use as an XLR option for the Red Komodo X. Also, you might be asking why I don't have the MK416 anymore. It's because I lost it and I haven't been able to find it. So this is my next best option. Now there are two things that I like on the Red Komodo X. One is having wireless transmission for my clients because the image looks really good and I want to impress them. And two is actually having battery options to last throughout the day with using this camera. Now for the wireless transmission, I'm actually going to be using the DJI transmission system. Now with the high bright monitor, which is a nice bright seven inch screen that I've actually talked about in a previous video, I can actually get the tilt-a-plate to mount on the back of the Komodo X 
through the V mount that comes with the body instead of using a secondary adapter then connecting this thing to it. On top of that, I also like using the Moment 140 watt hour battery as well. It's just as compact as some of the other smaller batteries, however, it does pack a punch with about 40% more power coming out of this guy, which means it might last a little bit longer, although I do keep two of these just in case. Now we're going to talk about the lens that goes on the front of the camera and actually how I treat each one. Now there's going to be a locking RF mount on the Red Komodo X, which is really good, especially for security and manual focus and making sure there isn't too much play. Now I do like having some PL mount lenses, which means I need an adapter and I decided to go with the Metabones RF 2PL locking mount as well. Now this is going to go on the front of the locking RF mount and then I could lock in my PL lenses like the Laowa Nanomorph. Now I haven't done a review on these, I haven't shot too much on them just yet, but these are some of the lenses that I use in PL mount in this combination to get it on my camera. Now sometimes I don't have somebody pulling focus for me or I otherwise use an electronic system, but if you're looking for something manual, well Tilta makes one of these guys. I still like the fact that it does use the in and out points to lock in your focus and I've actually had this for quite a while and it just goes on the 50 millimeter rod so I can pull focus on a lens like the Laowa Nanomorph. Now with shooting anamorphic, you probably want a monitor that's going to accommodate. Oftentimes shooting anamorphic is a little bit harder to get manual focus on, so that means you need a large monitor like this OCG7. Now what's cool about this guy is that it actually has HDMI and SDI in and out, so I can connect this to my transmitter in order to transmit a signal. On top of that, this is one of the brightest monitors that I've ever used. It's like 3000 nits, it's incredibly bright, and it works really well when I'm shooting outdoors like I usually do. Now I'm just going to put on a run at the mill small rig monitor clamp and it's going to go on my top handle. That way it's going to make it easier for me to see my image and also compose my shots. There's also nothing really interesting about them, so I usually don't include what cables I'm going to be using. They're just run-at-the-mill SDI cables or a DC to DTAP adapter cable as well. There's nothing really exciting about those, but you are going to see them in this video. So if you're wondering why there might not be power options to this guy, I usually do it at the end just because it's a pretty generic thing you're going to need. Now before I go into a couple other things in this rig build, there's actually one thing that's incredibly important, and it's actually going to be the memory storage that you're going to use on the Red Komodo X. Now you could have all the rig builds in the world, and you could have all the lenses and get the best image, but if you have nothing to record it to, at least securely, well then you're going to run into a couple of problems. Now Red actually does make their own cards, but that company that makes the cards for Red that they sell to you on B&H is actually made by the company Angelbird. Now Angelbird actually did send me both of the cards, a 2 terabyte and a one terabyte as well and it does have a read and write speed to handle the red komodo x footage and at the same time it's secure it's robust and you can get a pretty fast reader so file transfer is really easy now the map box that i choose is actually going to be the nisi c5 with the true color nd however i actually rotate which map box i'm going to use depending on the lenses that i'm going to use now when i first started using the red komodo x i was actually using the tokina vista primes as i was borrowing them for a little bit and they had a 114 millimeter filter thread which is way too big for something that's going to be like the nisi map box so what I did instead was I used my Polar Pro base camp to accommodate for the size. You could still use a ND filter which actually has pretty decent color accuracy and a couple other Polar Pro filters that come with that package. But for something that's a little bit smaller that also fits things that are up to about 82 millimeters, I could put an adapter ring on my Nisi C5 matte box put this at the front of the lens and not only do I get the true color ND and the only thing that I'm going to add is going to be this little handle with an Ari rosette mount on it. Now uh, this actually comes from my director's monitor that I don't use anymore. I have little handles at the side and I'm just going to put this at the side of my camera just in case I'm shooting handheld and I need some extra stability. Okay so that is everything on this Red Komodo X rig build. Now this is going to be perfect for handheld shooting or getting it on sticks or any of those two things in between. Now this is something where I need to shoot a little bit more of this guy in order for me to come up with a full review. I don't want to rush into it. I have done a couple of jobs already, but I really want to make some really cool pieces in order for me to have a final verdict. But I'm absolutely keeping this thing, even though a couple of other cameras have come out recently. If you guys want to see more videos on the KX, how I've been using it so far, or just other cameras I've rigged out because, well, there's a lot of them. Well, you could check out a video right over here. That being said, see you guys in the next one. Peace.